lazy static. So this is the crate that I mentioned in the last video, no, two videos ago. And this is for what are called lazily evaluated statics. So that is if you need to, you want to have a, uh, like a static or a const, something like that. And, uh, but it has something in it that uh, can't be done during the, uh, the const, uh, what's it called? Const uh, context. So there's something in it. There's like an allocation or some reason that you can't, uh, it's not a simple type. So you can't just uh, use it as a static. So let's just, um, for example, let's say we have this, uh, let's say we have this thing called an error listener and it's going to have a URL and it's going to have a client and request. So we haven't looked at request yet, but that's fine. Uh, just, uh, we're not actually going to use it. We'll just uh, put it in here. So this is for making like URL requests. So we'll stick the client in there. And then let's say you want, you have a bunch of functions and you want this, this thing is going to, it's going to send a request every once in a while and then see if there's an error. And if not, it's going to like jump in and, and cancel an operation. Maybe you're like waiting for something to come, but, um, if there's uh, if 10 seconds have gone by and it, it goes uh, and checks and there's an error, then it, then it uh, cancels the whole thing. So we'll imagine that it's doing that. Uh, but if you, um, and let's say you want to be a static or you want to be a static because um, you have some, um, it's kind of annoying to, you know, pass a reference to it everywhere. And it would be nice if you had a, uh, uh, if you could do this. So static error listener. So error listener, whoops, error listener equals, equals error listener. So you make this and URL is some sort of URL. I'm not going to use it, so it doesn't matter. And then the client is uh, the request client default. We're not going to touch it, so that's fine. This is actually async, but we're not touching it yet. So, so no problem. But then if you click on run, if you click on run, then you'll see that my brackets didn't line up somewhere. Uh, 11. Error listener equals error listener. URL, da, 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 client, client, default. Mm -hmm. What is that? Error. That should work now. There you go. This is the error I was looking for. So cannot call non-const function. Stir is to stir to string. So right away, this uh, this string is a problem, and I think this would be a problem too. This client default is not uh, it's not const. So um, calls and statics are limited to blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there, there you go. So cannot call this. This doesn't work either. So what you do is you bring this in. So lazily evaluate it. So here's why it works. Uh, it is possible to have statics that require code to be executed at runtime. So runtime starts and then you can execute the static. So it's kind of like a um, What's it called? Uh, like a loophole, basically. And it's almost the same. Um, it's got its own its own syntax here, but the only difference is that it calls them a static ref instead of a static. So it's it's nothing it's nothing weird. Um, and then you also stick it inside this lazy static box. So you do this, you do that, and then you call it a static ref. Of course, I didn't bring it in yet. Lazy static, and the name of the macro is also lazy static, like that. There you go. So now you can see it's compiling, and then we can um, we can bring in some functions. And I'm just going to I'm just going to copy paste them because they're not very interesting. So there you go. Some some functions. So the error listener, it's got this, um, it's going to check for error. And right now it's just going to return an okay because we don't know um, some sort of result. And then we've got some regular functions here. And so it's going to check for error. And here as well, it's going to check for error. And then, then there you go. So now down here we can do like, uh, 
Well, maybe I'll, I'll print something. Doing stuff. Is there an error? Like that. And then print line checking stuff. Any errors? Just like that. And so you can see as you do stuff, and then we've got check something else. So we can now error listener. Have a typo again. Error. There we go. So there you go. You can, yeah, so it, it works already. So yeah, now we have this uh, this static uh, error listener here and we can access it. We can, um, we don't need to uh, reference it or anything because it's, uh, it's a static, so you can access it from anywhere. And also you could, um, if you, the other thing about uh, lazy static that, uh, that makes it popular is you can put a mutex around something so you can actually change something you could have like a global like a global logger you see you see that a lot you'll have like this logger and then it'll be like a it'll be it'll be there globally and then you can like st stick stuff into it um, and then uh, pull stuff out and and kind of like uh, universally log all the things that are that are going on in in your program uh, using that so yeah that's uh that's pretty much it the lazy static is really really easy to use and as you can see you basically you take you try to make something that's a static and um, if it doesn't work then you just pull in lazy static and then and then it'll work so so there's that and the next crate is going to be once cell which is kind of similar but um, more complex but also more versatile at the same time so we'll look at that in the next video